Hey everybody, what's up squad? It's Suzette Speaks here and I'm so glad you're catching this stream. I have a very special woman that's joining me. She's an author, a mom, a founder of a nonprofit, and she has an incredible story. So I'm going to get right to it. Please join me in giving a warm Suzette Speaks squad welcome to none other than author Miss Veronique M. Pierre, author of The Strongest Woman in the World, is you let me bring her on here y'all i'm so excited that she made time and hi. is joining us how are you hi <laughs> thank so you for having me <laughs> absolutely thanks for making the time girl i i was so excited i'm gonna throw her book name up here now uh this program will be about women's empowerment and again i know the guys are watching so welcome if you're watching drop a comment let us know where you're watching from her book launch was yesterday so yes. i got her fresh off of her uh launch event oh yes let's show, throw it out let me, let me let me let the people see let me let the people see. yes purple cover beautiful image there's so much that goes into writing a book first and foremost mm -hmm. um, but i want people to get to know you get to know your story and obviously support and learn from um, everything that you have accomplished. You're such a dynamic uh, woman. You have many sides of you. So let's get started. So tell us first where you're from. I know you represent for South Florida. Tell us how you grew up. Where are you from? Uh, what's your city? I was born and raised in Florida. I'm a Floridian. Yay. And that's um, like really rare. So I'm excited <laughs> when I meet people that are from Florida. Yes. Um, and I have, I'm a mother of three kids. Um, I, I'm a new published author of The Strongest Woman in the World is You. I have a nonprofit organization for mental health. Um, it's for teenage girls between the ages of 13 to 18. Um, I graduated from Nova Southeastern University with my master's degree in business administration and minor in marketing. And I'm just a very outgoing person. Well, I'm excited to have you. There are so many of my usual uh, folks that will be dropping comments. So if you have questions for her, please don't be afraid to let us know you're watching. So I want to want to go into the uh, crux of the book. So first and mm -hmm. foremost, tell us a little bit about your life. Um, how did uh, you grow up? Did you have any um, challenges that you overcame? Tell us a little bit more about you uh, becoming a woman and growing into your own womanhood. Um, the book is basically a 21 day guide of how to cope with depression and anxiety. Um, the first seed of, you know, that was planted was when my father passed away when I was a very young age. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I was pregnant with my oldest child, um, my sister was murdered um, when I was eight months pregnant. Um, that was the second seed. My sister was murdered eight months pregnant. And then, you know, shortly after, like a, a year or two later, my mom um, passed away unexpectedly. And then the final straw was um, when I went through my divorce with my ex-husband, I was in a toxic, abusive relationship. And, you know, I basically was in a very dark place at that time. Um, I had my son. Um, he was a few months old. I was going through postpartum depression. Um, and I just, I didn't want to be in that place anymore. I, I wanted to, I, and, you know, it took my cousin who actually was a psychologist who actually came and visited me. And she realized, she was like, hey, you're not the bubbly Veronique anymore. You know, I'm coming down fr from out of town and you're not even much coming over to visit me. And she knows I'm a social butterfly. I'm always going to my auntie's house every Sunday after church. And, you know, she realized I didn't come visit her. She was like, hey, this is not her. You know, she always come over here every Sunday. And then when she came over here, she realized she was like, okay, I'm looking at you. You're not this bubbly girl anymore. You're not traveling. You're not doing the things that you love. So she automatically diagnosed me and said, you have depression. And I didn't realize it. And it took for her to see that. And then she was like, you know what, let's go do something that's going to get you out of this state. And she knows I love to decorate my house. She knows I'm very girly. I love to do my makeup, do my hair. She's like, you know, let's get you out of the house, get dressed up, you know, do your makeup. Let's go to home, home decor. Let's go get some decorations so we could decorate your house. And at that moment, that's when I realized, you know what, I am, I'm really am going through depression. I was in denial, but I was like, I really am going depression because once I walk in the store, I'm like, I'm, I am going through it. And that's when I realized I need professional help because I need to be healthy for my kids. Um, so I need to start with me first. And then I started doing things that, you know, that made me happy. And it's in the book. It's like, you know, 21 day guide of things that I've done, like different techniques, um, you know, journaling, um, traveling. Um, investing into hobbies, investing into my self-care, self-love. Um, and I just, you know, I was like, you know, how many other people that's probably going through this, you know, this could be a little guy that can help them as well. 
So that's why I created a book to help other people so they can get out of that pit hole as well. I am, wow. Like I, I, I clearly, um, like so many people watching, I'm moved by your transparency because there are folks that go through things and I'm sure you might be one of them. People would yeah. never know when they see you on the street, when they see you in church, when they see you around at work or wherever. Uh, we have a very, um, what should I say, a lot of women have very uh, skillful ways of wearing the mask. Was that your case when you were experiencing, you know, death and loss and all of this that you just share with us? Were you visibly, even though you were internally like, you know, dying, what yes. was the external like um, so that people can, uh, you know, relate to where they may actually be experiencing depression, you know, from loss or from what, you know, whatever circumstances they may have. But we often camouflage it very well. What were you like on a day-to-day -day basis when you went out to work or when you were mommy? Did you have that mask on? I did. Um, the number one ways that you can, you know, identify some of the symptoms that someone's going through depression is they isolate themselves. Um, they isolate themselves. Um, they have, you know, eating habits, um, unhealthy eating habits. Um, they, they're either not, they're unmotivated, they're not motivated to do things. And that was one of my things. I would literally um, would get up in the morning, just, you know, take a shower and get ready for work and pretend like everything was okay. And then when I get off from work, I would just go in, the, go in my room and just lock myself in a room. And I just didn't want to socialize with anyone. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to socialize with my friends. Um, and it was just, it wasn't me. I was a completely different person. Yeah, and, I, think, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you. I want to say hi to my people. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Blind got his wife, their life. Welcome to another day. Thank you uh, both. I was going to say, mm -hmm. sir, but it's a duo. Thank you so much. Let us know that you're watching. And if you're watching and catching the replay, let us know. And we'll come back and, mm -hmm. and read your comments. Um, I just want to go back to that because it is a very easy thing mm -hmm. to pass over. But mm -hmm. those behaviors, I think people, especially during this COVID time, sometimes yes. confuse what is uh, normal or or what is maybe a sign of you know depression or something deeper. Because a lot of people right now going into their house and don't do anything all day and you know uh, lock themselves in their room. Uh, it is it is it is. How, what, how did you know? Did you only when your cousin told you? Or was there a tipping point or some kind of, you know, life shaking moment Did your kids come to you and say, mom, really, I'm going to need you to do better. Like, was there somebody or something that triggered you seeing mm -hmm. yourself or did it take that outside person um, seeing seeing what was happening in your life? It took my cousin and then it took um, I had a meltdown at work um, when I was going through my divorce. And I can never I get in that? can I get in that? What does that yes. mean? No, we, you know, black folks, we got hi, good, we're fly, bless and highly favored. We barely <laughs> sure doesn't look like the video description. God, God put all I'm like, she's a mom, she's been through this, she has written a book, fought depression, all of this. So mm -hmm. they like, wait, hold on, who is this? Because we de we we as women definitely like, you know, we can put it together. Mm -hmm. We will look like a million bucks and be about to mm -hmm. die. So yes. yeah, so you you said because kind of like was the main impetus yes. in terms of you figuring this out. Yes. And then it took my coworker. I was at work and oh, yes, the I literally just the started. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, me? All right. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I was like, yes, I, there was a part of the story I didn't want to miss. Go ahead. Oh, sorry.